Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and I got an interesting one for you today. I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness. So, if you didn't notice, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness is being kickstarted by Palladium Books, and a lot of people got very excited, right? Uh, but hi, I'm Scott Garibay. I have a different take. <laughs> Because I think people got excited, but they're not paying attention to the numbers or the patterns, right? And there's a real problem here. All right, so first of all, let's look at what's actually happening, right? So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness is an extremely beloved tabletop role-playing game that was created by Palladium. It's easily 30 years old, right? And um, and it was, it was... I don't even think it was ever published in color... Uh, I had the book. Uh, I may still have it somewhere in my house. Um, I'll have to t- take a look. But I owned it. I ran it. I loved it. You know, like many, you know, uh, people who can't, you know, who are tabletop role playing game, who are in the tabletop role playing game community in the 80s and the 90s, right? And so this is a much beloved game. So they, they announced this, right? And you're like, Scott, what's the big deal? It's just another Kickstarter. Well, this is a big deal, and this is wrong, like fundamentally wrong. And it points to a massive problem like that, that I don't think people are talking about, and we really need to talk about this. So Palladium Books is 42 years old, right? Why are they Kickstartering anything, right? Like, Kickstarter was never intended for this. It was not in, It was intended for garage band nonsense, right? Like... And, and if you go on Twitter, you will hear people like just like Kickstarter is being used by not real, you know, it, Kickstarter is a gamble, right? Like you gamble to see if you can get a product that no real company is ever going to make, right? That, that's in, that's what it's supposed to be for. It's not, it's not like, and so Palladium Books is a real company. They've been around for 42 years, right? And they're Kickstartering. A project that is extremely important to the tabletop role-playing game community, right? This is like uh, this has more traction and more excitement around it than a lot of people. And the reason why is is uh, TMNT uh, Mutant Mayhem film, and also I don't know if you're aware of this, but T- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, Rise of I think it's called Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's it it it's actually I think it's one back, but there's a, there was a recent Nickelodeon TMNT series which had an animated movie and a, and two seasons of animated shows that was phenomenal. It was really good, and so TMNT is getting old fans and new fans, and has momentum, right? And so basically, Palladium is showing up because they're like, oh, they're like, oh my gosh, uh, we remember we still own the the rights to this. We published this and our you know and. I'm guessing that their their publishing of it, you know, that their rights to publish it never waned, right? Like, because it's really kind of odd what's happening. But my point is, right, this is a huge problem that a company that's been in the tabletop role-playing game industry for 42 years has to Kickstarter a critical project, right? You can't get an investor for this to and just make this like a real company was put on her big girl pants. Like, it's a real problem. This is a significant, very real issue, right? Like we should not still be here. We shouldn't be in this, in this case where, you know, where real companies are kickstarting stuff. So here's where we land, right? This is a real important tabletop role playing game. This is a real company that's been around for 42 years and they're acting like they're Joe Blow in Oregon, you know, that's going to like um, you know, print, you know, print, have the book shipped to them and like, you know, do the, and like put together everything in, you know, in their garage, right? The, exactly the same, you know, Gary in 1974, you know, literally sat in his living room and pieced together all the parts, right? This is a company still doing that in, after 42 years in business, right? And so this is where we land, right? Dun- 2023 is the most important year in the history of tabletop role-playing games. And the reason why is we reached a point where as a tabletop role-playing gaming community, we realized Dungeons & Dragons is an industry. The OSR and the Indies combined are not a real industry, right? There is not enough 
traction and momentum and ability to produce quality at a regular frequency to be called an industry in my humble opinion, right? And so when you see a problem this bad and it's illustrated this clearly, a, 40, a company that's been in t- doing tabletop role playing games for four decades that cannot fund and simply create a product that is this critical, right? Like a real company can, then we reach the point where, and this is what I'm saying, I think Dungeons and Dragons has defeated the OSR and the indie, the entire in the entire collection of companies that ex- exist across the entire OSR and the entire indie so badly, right? That I think we need to actually start talking about pro bono work, and as a Dungeons and Dragons community, say, okay, you guys have crushed the OSR and the indie, so we wanted you to beat them. We didn't want you to like beat them into the ground, right? This has become embarrassing for the OSR and for the Indies. And at this point, is there some way you can begin to start sending help, right? And to prop up the OSR and the Indie facsimile that looks like an industry but is not, right? And so that's that's very interesting and very right. And it and it's it's an incredibly weird space to be, but I think we're there. Like, you know, Dungeons & Dragons has defeated the OSR and the Indie so badly that I think the D&D community may want to actually stay. And this is not unprecedented. I, I know you're not aware, I don't think you're aware of this, but in, again, in the 80s and the 90s, Apple had been defeated so badly, right, that Microsoft would often loan them money and help them to continue to structure so that they didn't look like a monopoly, right? Like, and that's where we are now. We've just reached this devastating point where the OSR and the Indies, the best of them, are just producing junk at, ir- at infrequent points. And and that wouldn't be a problem, but they have assets that are so real and so important that for the health of the industry for tabletop role-playing games, I think the D&D community needs to, to encourage Dungeons & Dragons to show mercy and send out designers, marketers, distributors, and actually aid the OSR and the indie uh, producer, publishers, and say, this is how you create a real product. This is how you create quality. And also, of course, also, now that, like, can we stop pretending Dungeons & Dragons has defeated every single one of your OSR and your indie games? The, your companies that have been going for four decades can't do what Dungeons and Dragons does every three months on clockwork, right? So I really, I this worried me badly, right? That that a product that is highly desired, right, being published by an indie, uh, by an indie publisher, right, um, could, has to Kickstarter after four decades, right? That the, after four decades they're doing the same junk. That Gary Gygax was doing in 1974, right? By 1986, you know, TSR was up and running and was rolling, right? Like, and so, you know, I just, I really, this worries me, and I really think that we, as the D and D community, should can, should think about asking Dungeons and Dragons to literally start pro bonoing and help the rest of the OSNR and industry, so that what's happening is not so embarrassing for them. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear yours. Let me know in the comments. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.